S is Savers of Paradise. Um, for many years, John wore a really scruffy leather jacket and what was written on the back of it reminds me of them. I was very moved. I think there was a, it was a BBC documentary about him a few years back and it starts with him looking, I think he may be even on the Mersey, on like the Mersey ferry and he's looking out across the river and the first shot is him wearing one of my promotional record label jackets. I'd had the name Sabres of Paradise on hold for quite some time. It was actually the name of a hazy fantasy B-side, um, unless I'm mistaken, of John Wayne's Big Leggy, a fine pop tune, um, um, an ode to the joys of anal sex that no one really realised at the time. got into the charts as well. Where have I gone wrong? That's number 29 in the festive 50, Sabres of Paradise and uh, Wilmot. I got into um, clandestine uh, radio listening at the age of about 12 or 13. I'd become obsessed with music. Um, and I wanted to listen to it all the time. So I had um, a transistor radio. It wasn't small, from what I can remember. It was about yay big with a green faux crocodile skin cover and surreptitiously under the clothes. And, and um, I think I just, that's probably how I discovered John Peel. I, sh I shared my teenage bed with him. <laughs> I had a nice upbringing, but it was kind of boring suburbia. So music was always um, an entry to another world, a secret world. So with, 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 with John, um, it was an entry into a secret world, but I was already, it was like doubly secret because I was doing it under the covers. You know, I, I would risk all sorts of groundings and uh, pocket money um, docking <laughs> for, for the sake of, you know, trying to listen to the whole two hours without being caught. <laughs> That's really nice, I think. Savers of Paradise in session. I'd like to pretend this was the third or fourth session they'd done for the programme, but I'm ashamed to say it's the first. That's Blackfriars Sunday. More from them later on. Um, as a sort of 13 year old child, some of them said in sort of 20 or 25 years' time, you'll be doing a session for John Peel. Um, it would have blown my tiny, fragile mind. I first started DJing, I was the kind of guy that went on at 6 o'clock in the morning when everybody else um, was too twatted to, to um, operate machinery. And I managed to kind of combine the two better than most people and I had a good record collection. So I would, I would play anything for Throbbing Gristle, uh, King Tubby, Reggae Records, um, uh, post-punk English stuff, 400 blows, a certain ratio. Um, I'm still channeling the legacy of all that music that I heard John play. Really, these shelves are full of music that he actually, you know, tracks that he would have played. If you had to pin me down and say, you know, name some things, you know, your abiding John Peel memories of what he played, it would be Ivor Cutler, Life in a Scots Living Room, Viv Stanchel, Sir Henry at Rawlinson's End, um, a record called Inverness by The Pratt, which is an amazing, 10-year-old punk band singing Inverness, Inverness, what a mess, what a mess. <laughs> Oh, that's great stuff, and that's uh, the Pratt's, of course. And if they're this good now, what are they going to be like when they're as old as, say, Susie and the Banshees? Well, the chances are, of course, very often happens that they won't be as good as they are now, but time alone will tell. To my eternal regret, um, not long before he passed away, I was at Sonar, the um, music festival in Barcelona, and, um, and uh, it was kind of late afternoon, and I was a bit worse a bit worse to wear and uh, sort of stumbling around and uh, it, uh, one of his production assistants came over and said oh John's here um, he'd like to interview you is that okay and I, and I just said look I'm in no fit position to be talking on radio and politely declined and he said that's fine and then I don't know how many months later it was it, was, it wasn't too long after that, that that John passed away but thinking about it it's probably it's probably best to tell the story of regret at not having done it than regret of actually having done it and made an absolute arse of myself in the great man's presence. <laughs> uh, 
had a very open mind with music and a lot of people around me um, questioned how I could kind of like disco records and punk records and I questioned myself until I heard the first John Peel show and it's like well of course you can love all this disparate stuff it's all a means of escape it's all a means of transcending yourself and that's the ethos I've, I've kept with me not just how I listen to music but how I make it as well <laughs>